Hello, well today's video is going to be something a little different. We're actually going to be taking a look at a, a hand mixer and seeing what goes on inside it. Right, so this is our hand mixer. I'm not going to hand mixer. Um, is used for making cakes or uh, whisking egg yolks or cream um, and comprises of two beaters, normally two beaters, spinning around and a very simple control. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, we've got a zero, and one, one, two, three, four, to five, top speed of five. Okay, so that's a control mechanism there. Uh, it, it plugs in. Okay, what do we have? So what's interesting is, uh, when it's on its speed settings, you can't release the beaters. They can only be released on the zero. And if we push that, the beaters are then released. Let's be looking at seeing what happens there. Okay, so let's take it apart. Oh, the model number, just in case anybody's come here looking for instructions for a particular model. It's a Draytech. A Draytech. And it's a HM. Uh, 706. Okay, Dratex HM706. HM, I think it's Hand Mixer. Uh, and it's from 2019. So it's lasted at least two years in our kitchen in the cafe next door. Okay, now to open it, there are three screw holes one at the top and two at the bottom. Okay, now I did discover that we can't use. This kind of drive, if you can see that on the camera, I don't know, that's a Philips or Posi drive. Um, in Japanese, that's actually known as a plus driver. From the mathematical symbol, the plus sign. Plus and the flat bladed screwdriver in Japanese is known as a minus. Very logical, plus or minus. But the screws in our hand mixer are supposedly tamper proof. And they've used a screw that needs a Y driver. Okay, again, I'm not sure you're going to see that on the video, but it's a Y shape. So let's get into that case. Okay, why they fought to make the mixer tamper proof, I don't know. Maybe to stop me opening it up. So what secrets lie inside? Okay, so I think that's the free. Okay, that's the free bits off. We can now open and take the screws out. One, two, and the three. Hang on, I don't know if you can just take those heads. Can you see the head there? It's a Y shape on there. Okay, and if we open it up. We now have our top casing. Notice the residue of flowers, flower in there. And what it's used, we'll put it over there. And now the bottom casing contains the main part. All the workings of the hand mixer. Okay, so let's take a quick look. We have at the top a oh, the spring disappear. Oh, there's a springs release mechanism. A spring. Boing, boing, boing. Fitted on there to push the beaters out. Okay, so we have a speed control mechanism. And that's a speed control there. Um, at the moment, it's in its off position. We can release, and I believe that part there and the casing stop us pushing it down uh, when it's in action. We can't really see that working. So we have one wire coming in here, electrical wire coming in here to the control lever and on the other side depending on its position that's speed one that would come back through this blue wire through some circuitry and control the speed speed two is using a is that a gray wire gray wire speed three um, is on a yellow wire speed four is a brown wire and at top speed um, speed five, 
a white wire then carries the current back to the motor and determines the speed. Okay, so nothing digital going on there. Very analog, old style. Okay, switch selector. Not quite easy to understand. Okay, now in the mixer, the main part, well, the main parts of the mixer, we have the speed control. Important. Uh, what provides? Uh, the spinning action or the power is of course an electric motor, electrical motor, a little powerful electrical motor there, and um, a transmission or gear change there. We've got the worm from the motor, a worm gear, then drive these two cogs, um, and these are then connected to the beta holes, there, the beta comes in, and they spin around giving us the mixing action. That's a quite simple easy to see. Okay, we also have a power cord coming into the casing there, held on by a little grip to stop us pulling the cord out in normal use. Um, various capacitors to stop the um, interference with other electrical equipment. You don't want your television going blurry while you're making your cakes. Okay, let's see if we can take it down just a little bit more. Ah, interesting. This fan at the front what does the fan do well electrical equipment electrical motors especially create heat as they spin round um, and heat as we all know is dangerous for electrical components and if the machine overheated it would also potentially um, cause a problem with the casing and melting um, we don't really want that um, so the fan cools the motor that sucks in air through the front casing, you can see those holes in the front casing. Also, it sucks in air and uh, bits of flour, and, uh, and that pulls it, pulls the air in, and pushes it through the entire body of the hand mixer before ejecting it through the back, keeping everything uh, relatively cool and safe. Okay, let's see if we can dismantle some more. Uh, come across. There are three screws. Interestingly, the screws on the inside, we can use either a flat-bladed screwdriver or um, a Phillips-type screwdriver. No tamper-proof on the inside once you're in. Okay, so I'll use a flat blade on here, or a minus, as I said before, minus. That's our minus driver. One, two, and let's use a plus driver. The third one. Okay, also the cable grips are also plus or minus okay. Out the motor body. Oh, there's a, a washer down the back part. There's a three screws and one washer. Um, that's the bottom casing. Again, uh, lots of uh, flour, fine particles of flour that have come into the casing. So, one probably casing in the back there. Okay. okay, now to take a look at the motor. There, we can see at the bottom, is a commutator. The commutator there. And that's where the power to the motor um, is delivered. Look at that there. Um, this kind of transformer at the bottom provides the current to the motor and the various colours. Remember from the colour switch, um, that's the red, which is the main in to the power switch. But then coming back out of that we had the yellows, browns, whites and greys and depending where they come in will determine the amount of current that is then fed to the motor. Again uh, two capacitors uh, on the motor uh, reducing any interference issues. 
uh, and actually inside, once we take it apart, that's if we pull off the cooling fan. Pull, 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 okay. Okay, so that's the cooling fan, plastic cooling fan. Okay. The two bolts holding all this assembly together, so again, that's right, let's come into the... A little difficult to access. Enough from that yet, so a bit more. Okay, actually, hold everything together. Oh, okay, that'd be a nice. Okay, okay, now if you pull it apart, you should. Oh, the drive chain is connected, isn't it? To the so the worm is in there. So we pull from this side. Can we pull it out on water? No, we can't. Oh, there we go, okay. 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 So now we have our motor. Move that to the side. Okay, just turn that around to break it out. Okay. So that's our kind of driver. And where that worm was coming in and turning those two wheels. They run nice and free. Okay. That transmission. We'll put that up there. just popped out were at the back of the motor are the electrical brushes I don't know if you can see that on the small camera can you see those okay. these are uh, carbon and graphite mix um, and these actually fit just down at the bottom bit of the black part there and they provide the power to the motor The commutator is this bit at the back, um, and there it's split, so it's uh, isolated. And the power comes in on each side, or well, the power is passed across from each from one side to the other, should I say? And these carbon graphite um, brushes provide the power, so it's kind of um, it's connected. It's live. It's not. It's not. Um, and they provide the power, the electrical current, that then feeds into the coil inside the, um, the motor, which creates a magnetic field, um, attraction, repulsion, attraction, repulsion, attraction, repulsion, providing our spinning action. Okay. Okay, the carbon brushes. Um, and they work a bit like a pencil, we can. Okay. okay, there's the brushes, the motor brushes. Um, also on the motor, just to clarify, we have the shaft. Okay, running straight through the motor. Um, those are the uh, rotor coils. And the coils and coils of wire. Um, and on the outside we will have uh, magnets, which is this piece here. This creates a magnetic field. That runs in the center. Right there when it's running, it doesn't touch. Obviously, when it's in its housing. And the traction repulsion, the traction repulsion, switching magnetic fields will create a rotary action. Okay, classic motor. So that will go down. Okay, I don't think I can take any more apart. I think we may have left the kind of electrical workings um, with the magnet. And some kind of transformer to control the speed and then the connections uh, to the to get the power to the motor. And of course the power cable. Um, again there's another large capacitor there to stop with any interference with electrical items. Um, but that seems to be it. Okay. 
Alright, let's put that down now. Okay, so that is basically what's inside a hand mixer. All very simple. Um, if you have any comments or you like the video, please give us a like. And look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for watching.